it says that we have a dynamite blast that, prof that propels a heavy rock uh, straight up in the air with a velocity of a um, 160 feet per second. All right, so there's this big, huge blast, and they blow up some rock, and a rock goes straight into the air, straight up, um, 160 feet per second. And for our, uh, for our purposes, they said that we can model the height of the rock as a function of time, which is equal to 160 uh, times t minus 16 t squared, where t is uh, time in seconds. And so this will give us the uh, position in feet uh, if, if we calculate time in seconds. So part A wants us to figure out how high does it go? Well, what do you notice about the equation? Well, the equation is a quadratic equation. The leading coefficient, negative 16, is negative, so it's a parabola that opens down. Well, if the parabola opens down, then the vertex is going to be the maximum height. So if this models the height of the object, and I want to be clear on that, we're going to get a parabola that looks like this, where the x value is actually the time and the y value is the feet, how high it goes. All right? Does that make sense? <coughs> So we're used to seeing it in terms of x, y, but really, really this is going to be t and s, position over time. And since this is a quadratic that opens down, then if we find the vertex, then that's the maximum height. Now here's the thing. How do we do that with calculus? Well, what I want to notice is that at the vertex, my tangent line is horizontal, so that means that S prime of T is equal to what? Remember that S prime is the slope of the tangent line, and if the tangent line is horizontal at the vertex, zero. yeah, so this is equal to zero. So to find the maximum height using calculus, what I would do is I would take S prime of T and set it equal to zero. So what is S prime of t? Well, the derivative of S of t is going to be 160 minus 32t. So now to find when this equals zero, I'm going to say zero is equal to 160 minus 32t. I get negative 160 equals negative 32t. Divide both sides by negative 32. And I get t is equal to what? What's that? Five? How many times does that go into that? Five? Uh, is it? Yeah. Five, yeah. Is it? Yeah. Okay. So five. Now what does that mean? That means after five seconds, this will reach the maximum height. Right? What is the maximum height? Because that's the question that they're asking us. Well, how do I find the maximum height? But yeah, I've got to plug it in. Uh, one thing I want to point out, what is the derivative of a position function? What? What does this represent? The velocity, right? If this is my position, and I take the derivative of the position equation, then I get the velocity equation. So. When t equals 5, in other words, at 5 seconds, what is the velocity of the object in the vertical direction? Well, think about it. This rock goes up in the air, goes up in the air. It starts at 160 feet per second. Just as it reaches the maximum height, what is its velocity? Nothing. 
Yeah, so our velocity in the y direction is equal to zero. So when we take the derivative and set it equal to zero, what we're really trying to figure out is what is the when does the velocity equal zero? That occurs at five seconds. To find the height, I need s of five. Okay, I kind of ran out of room there, but that's okay. So s of five. So when I when I crank through that, I get uh, 400. Yeah. So what I'm finding out is that this equation has a vertex at five seconds, and the rock is 400 feet high. So the maximum height is 400 feet. Which equation did I use to plug in the five? S of T, which is the position. That's part A. Now for part B. Part B of this example wants us to, well, you know, what is the velocity and speed of the rock when it is at 256 feet above the ground on its way up and on its way down? So what I need to know is when s of t equals 256. Now why do I need to know that? Because I want to know when the rock is at 256 feet. Now it's a parabola and so this graph is a position over time and so what I'm looking for is when this graph is equal to 256 feet. Well, I'm going to say 256 is equal to 160 t minus 16 t squared because that's the equation of position. And I am curious at what time that position is going to be 256. So what I want to do is, are all these factorable by 16? So what's 256 divided by uh, 16? Um, Isn't it just 16? It's 16. 16. Wow, look how that works. And then I get 10t minus t squared. Now what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to factor out a t and I get t times 10 minus t is equal to 16. Oh wait, I don't want to do it that way, do I? Mm -mm. Let's just move the six. Let's move the sixteen over here, and I get negative. I get negative. Oh, you guys started your giggling. Made me screw up here. Zero equals uh, negative t squared plus t ten t minus sixteen. Now I don't like when it comes to factoring this thing out. I don't like a negative t squared, so I'm going to multiply everything by negative 1 and that gives me 0 equals t squared minus 10t plus 16. So we're going to try to factor this with the guess, guess and check method. Um, so I'm going to say t squared and 16 over here. So I've got t times t. Now I need two numbers that when I multiply them together they give me a positive 16 but when I add them up they give me a negative, negative 10. Negative, negative, negative. Negative 2 and negative 8. You guys must have had an amazing pre-calculus teacher. He's probably handsome too. So what we figured out was, what we figured out is that if I take t minus 2 times the quantity t minus 8, I'll get this quadratic here. So we factored it. So this occurs when t equals 2 and t equals 8. So now, just to kind of recap, we're not even close to done. Good. All right, so <laughs> yay. Um, we're figuring out the times in which our rock is at 256 feet. So our rock goes up in the air, and at two seconds, it's at 256 feet. It still continues to travel to 400 feet, and then on its way back down, eight seconds after it was initially launched, it's at 256 feet again. Now the question was, how fast is it going? What is the velocity? 
that derivative. Yeah, so now what I've got to do is I've got to figure out what the speed is at the times 2 and 8 seconds. So we did all that work just to find the time. So my derivative is the velocity. So the velocity of this thing is s prime of t, which we said was 160 minus 32t. So I've got to do s prime of 2, which is 160 minus 32 times 2, 160 minus 64 is, what is that, 96? Is that what that is? If you want it to be. I think that's what it is. Yeah, yes, 96. 96. So now what did I just figure out? What does the 96 represent? The velocity. Which is 96 feet. Second. 96 feet per second. Now, that's on the way up. Anybody want to take a stab at what they think it will be the speed on the way down? S Negative 96. What? Yeah. God, I can't write and talk and think at the same time today. Can you breathe? Are you breathing? You gotta Don't make sure breathe you're breathing. breathing. He's not breathing. No! What's 32 times 8? 240 plus 16, 256. Somebody? 90, negative 96. It's negative 96. Now, I'm assuming, because you're so good in calculus, that you had also not only an amazing pre-calculus teacher, but you probably had an amazing physics teacher. I would be willing to bet. <laughs> it's, it's rare to have both. But what is the neg why, why is it positive versus negative? Can somebody explain that to me? Because gravity is a vector. Which has direction and magnitude. Oh yeah! Can we go to Six Flags again? Please. We might as well. Okay, shh. focus. We're still not quite done with the problem. Okay. But yes, as as uh, my wonderful students has pointed out, is that velocity is a vector and it has direction and magnitude. So the magnitude is 96. This one is going in the positive direction up. And then on the way back down is the negative direction. So one represents the speed of 96 feet per second going up, and then 96 point or 96 feet per second coming down. So that's what the plus and minus uh, represents. All right. Now we're still not quite done. So that's part B. Now for part C. So remember, we're getting all this information from. We're getting all this information from this here, right? From this original equation. So it says, what is the acceleration of the rock at the time during its flight after the blast? What is the acceleration of the rock at any time? All right, so now let's recap what we've done. We said, and I'm gonna write this on a separate sheet of paper. We said that the position of the rock is modeled as S of T which is 160t minus 16t squared. So that gives us the position of the rock. Then we said that if we took the derivative of that, that would be the rate of change or the change in position. And that is the velocity, which was 160 minus 32t. So that's the velocity. So acceleration is the rate of change of the velocity. So the rate of change of velocity would be s double prime, which is the derivative of velocity, which is negative 32 feet per second squared. So when, when you guys took physics from that amazing physics teacher, who was handsome and intelligent and wise and humble, and a wizard. Um, we 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 uh, we we learned that 9.8 meters per second squared was the acceleration due to gravity. But now we have feet per second squared. Hey, if you were to convert that to meters per second squared, what do you think 32 feet per second? That's 9.8 meters. So this is the acceleration due to gravity, which is what we would expect. Yeah. 
Newton. Yep, yeah, because of Newton and apples. Yeah. Oh. oh. That's it for part C. Woo! Okay, part D. Uh, part, was it part D? Yep. yep. So now. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Without part Z. When does I'm recording? When does the rock hit the ground? <laughs> Shh, guys, don't don't lose focus. We're almost done. This is quick. So now, when is the when is the rock gonna hit the ground? Oh, and. and I think they're talking about time. So when will this thing hit the ground? After it's done. Good one. After the well, because if so, if we take the time that it takes for the um, rock to go up, mm -hmm. then we just add that to the time it takes to hit and go down. Yeah, that's 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 what? that's the easy way to do it. So what she's saying is, two times the time it goes up, which we said was five seconds. Remember, we said that to reach its maximum height, it took five seconds. And so it should probably take five seconds to come down because the acceleration is always going to be negative 32. And she's right; it, it, it would take 10 seconds. But now, how could I, how could I verify that algebraically? Just and you're like, no, Mr. Adams, I don't want to accept it. But um, I don't want to verify. We have to say 10 is equal to the position, or not 10. Um, we have to say. Zero, yeah. The position is zero. So if I take the position equation, which was this thing here, right, and set it equal to zero and then solve, then we'll, we'll get somewhere. So I'm going to divide everything by 16. It makes it easier for me. And I get 10t is equal or uh, minus t squared. Wow. Zero equals 10t minus t squared. And then if I factor out a t, this is what I was trying to do earlier, uh, then I get t equals 0 and t equals 10. And that's what we're looking at. Okay? Any questions?